All right, when you're ready, man. All right, um, it's your boy Will Kill'em. Once again, uh, Liberty City, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We are standing in the back of um, USA Flea Markets, which is located on 79th Street and 32nd Avenue in my hood. Poneville, stand up. You already know what it is. So what I'm finna do is I'm finna take y'all to my world as a kid. This is where I hone my skills as a hustler. I was first gave a bomb down here. A bomb is, you know, uh, it's, it's weed, crack, cocaine. Uh, it's a lump sum of uh, whatever drug you got and you selling. So that's what a bomb is. And this is where I first started to sell my weed when I was a kid. And it wasn't to, uh, I'm not even gonna lie, it wasn't because I didn't have nowhere to stay, or it wasn't because I was trying to help moms with the lights, nah, I just wanted to be fresh. And, um, you know, a nigga gave me an opportunity, so I took it. So, we finna get some shots of what it looked like in 79th Street Flea Market. Fuck with your boy, we'll kill him. Uh, the great, infamous USA oh, Flea Market. You already know what time it is. I'm sitting here with Goob, man. Goob is one of the few, man, that was fortunate enough to take uh, a God-given gift of uh, putting some shit together and making moves with it and trying to make profit from it and do it the right way. Not too many dudes uh, find a way up out the hood and find a, a, a lucrative way to, to maintain a lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? But my nigga, he put his mind together, bought him a little shop, and you been running strong. How long you been here, um, Goop? Shit, man, probably like eight years already, dog. That's it, what's it up. It don't die, and then, you know, um, I employ niggas out the hood, you know what I'm saying? Every nigga who I got like four workers right now. This is one shop that we started with, but now we got three locations, you know what I'm saying? I got um, a couple of workers and all my all my niggas convicted felons, you know what I'm saying? That's what's so up. So I guess you could say I'm like, you know, like you said, I'm a pillar, I'm trying to Help right. me hold it up, right. you know what I'm saying? Right, so you've been eight years and running in, the, in, in this flea market. In this, yeah, in this shop in right this here. In this shop right here. Yeah. Born and raised in Liberty City, correct? No, I was not born okay. and raised in Liberty City. I was born in, I was born in High Lil Seminola. Mm -hmm. Niggas might not know about Seminola, but a lot of the, a lot of the get money old gangsters from Liberty City, they know about Seminola because Seminola, it's a little, it's a, Seminola's it's a little black neighborhood in Hialeah, and you know Hialeah consists of nothing but really Cubans, you know what I'm saying? So Hialeah niggas went to elementary school with Cuban niggas who grew up and had work, you know what I'm saying? So right. that's really how Seminola got scrum because so we, grew up with Hialeah, we grew up with Hialeah. Um, when did you start 40s. making that transition from over there in that area, coming I mean, over here getting money? Well, I mean, well, really, I started making the first transition. You know, we as young, we used to just ride our bike to scrape the Liberty City, you know what I'm saying? Fucking around. Every Christmas, nigga get on the nigga the bike gang, you know what I'm saying? We riding out. We riding out on occasion, but you know, I started, I think like my seventh grade or sixth grade year. Um, out the Fowler, that's when mm -hmm. um, Lincoln Field got bust out to high, high lip. Mm -hmm. So I met my little, my first baby mama. You know, I had my first baby at like 13, you know what I'm saying? So I met her, she from the, she from the Lincoln Field, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So you know, my baby, from my baby born, my baby born and raised, right? She a field baby, <laughs> right, you know right. what I'm so, saying? <laughs> so you guilty by association. Yeah, dog. she a field baby, man. I couldn't stay out of the field after that, man, that's it did, you know what I'm saying? I was still young, wasn't even much getting no money when I first had my, my first child. Let me ask you this: Now that you done been here though, and, and, and you done you done planted your feet, you got your businesses up and running. Do you ever really want to leave? I mean, of course a nigga want to leave and travel, but they always got to come back. Right. Always got to come back. You don't want to be leaving for gone. Yo, I, I, I ain't gonna never leave for gone. But even when I leave, my presence still is felt because. The right. shop's still running, right. you know what I'm saying? I'm, even when I'm gone, I'm like a ghost, man. You can feel me, man. Don't sleep. Come to my place of business, man, you, and feel me. That's it, in Liberty City. Let me ask you this one last question before we go. As a community, though, and it's a more serious question because, you know, we do want to uh, keep things positive in Liberty City, man. We want all the killing and all the, the black-on-black violence, all the... We just had a young brother get shot, gunned down by the police the other day, mm -hmm. man. So, in the next right coming outside. years, the, as a matter of fact, right outside where we are right now. So, in the next couple of years, Gooba, you know what I'm saying, as you become to get older, what can we see from Gooba as far as giving back to the community once Gooba get established to the point where he can 
broadness arises and start, you know, foundations or you only, know only fundraisers. Thing, only thing I only thing that I see that can stop the killing in the hood, cause ninety percent of the killings is about some money, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nigga taking some money, nigga ain't got no money, you know what I'm saying? Or something about, it got something to do with some money, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the only thing I really see is to put some money in the community, you right. know what I'm saying? Some Employment. type of way. Employment. I mean, something. I, Man, however you do it, you know what I'm saying? Either you either you get the businesses money, you know what I'm saying, so they can employ people, or I'm not Obama, man. Come up with a way, man. Put some money in the hood. That's all I can tell you, That's man. Put some money in the hood, dog. That's what's up. Hey. <laughs> All right, man. So we in one of the good, the jewelry shops in uh, inside USA Flea Market. Um, basically, this is where it goes down if you ask want some bling bling in the hood. As you can see, that's me long time ago. This is him long time ago. Iced out, grilled out. That's what's up. So how much how much does something like this cost? Top and bottom? Yeah. Um, 14 carat about like $400. 400 and 400 to get you how many? About like 12. 400 to get you 12. 14K. 14K. Remember that. And what's the name of the shop? Uh, Triple T. Triple T Gold T. My name is Moses. You can come all the time over here. That's what's up. Come here next. Come here. He got top and bottom, two fangs top. Good, it's your boy Young Mr. Smurf from the thing straight from California representing, man. Shout out to all my nigga MIA, man. You already know how we do it up in here. He got it right now, or you waiting on the mold? He got it right now. Go ahead, pop him in. Let's see what's going on. Have a seat in the middle. Ah, big. How they feel? Feel good. Decent. That's what's up. Yeah, that man, it's this nigga right here, man. Y'all need anything, man. Custom jewelry, whatever you need. Holla at my dog Moses right here, man. Right now, how we doing it? Ah. Uh, a couple of years. Couple of years? Yeah. The most. Also gold? Also gold. So the process is what they do is they take a mold of your teeth and then they basically just mold a gold to it. And then it's like once they get ready to put the shit in your mouth, it's a lot of adjusting and different shit like that to get it to fit correctly because there's nothing really like holding it except your teeth. You know what I'm saying? There's no glue, there's no cement or anything like that. Oh, you know about so, I, I know about <laughs> I know about um I know huh? about being in the flea market. Son, bola bola, I'm buying. I'm chasing my dream. Goals in Miami, man, it's like a, a victory lap, man. It's like, you know what I'm saying, you, you, you done set on your path, dog. You start getting them, and then once you get one, a set, you like, my man just started with four, you want more. It's like tattoos, man. Once you start with one, you want more, you want more. Set. That's your second set? Yeah, I have my whole set, just I wanted the four things. Once you start, you don't want to stop. Have you ever seen the Harry Potter movie? The what? Harry Potter movie? Yeah. You see how they do the magics over there? Yeah. You want to see how they do the fire things? actually how you make the gold and stuff.
are um, in USA Flea Market on 79th Street and 32nd Avenue, and we are in one of the best clothing stores that's in here. Um, how I know? I've been spinning with them since I was 15 years old. This is probably one of the first stores that I bought out of in uh, USA Flea Market. And as you can see, man, he carried the latest, the latest trends. You got Truck Fit right here from Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? And, he, and it's authentic. He gives you the real deal. You can come and get your 501 jeans. Oh, man. We got more Truck Fit, Lil Wayne. I'm going to get on that Truck Fit when I get a chance, too. <laughs> I like that. Fucks with we. I, hey, matter of fact, Wheezy, if you ever need a sponsor, I mean, not a sponsor, but a model for some Truck Fit, man, holla at your boy, man. I love it. And then we come over here, we got some Jeezy with the 87. You know what I'm saying? With that, with the, ooh, did you, are you catching the flyers fitted? I mean, the flyers snap back. All this 87? All this 87, 32. And, and keep in mind now, uh, this is all real shit. This ain't knockoff now. This is all real shit. So when you come in here, make sure your money's right. Because he's not going to give you flea market prices. This is, this is real, okay? All right. But, um, yeah, I want... So now that we see the clothes, man, I want to get a shot of the man, the owner of the store. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So once again, 32nd Avenue, That's my 79th point. Street. And as of right now, we're going to pick out some hats. We're going to pick out two hats. <laughs> All right. Right. So right now, I'm getting ready to pick out a hat. You know I'm a Heat fan. You see my chest. So we're going to go after a Heat hat. But as you can see, there's a wide variety. Um, right here, I think these are the these are the snapbacks, right? Yeah. So you got um you, you got multiple color snapbacks. Look at the Van Trudel, the Grizzly, and, and, and all of this is Mitchell and Ness. And this is uh, new item right here. And this is the new items right here. <coughs> new era. Yes. All right, I already know. Some Scullies. Wow. This. Uh, are you seeing the Lacoste Scullies? Wow. That's dope right there. Uh, okay. The green and gray uh, Miami Heat snapback. Yeah. Are you digging that? I am digging that. And my friend behind the camera, Shanks. Shout out to Ooh. Shanks. He's going to pick him out one. I'm going to help him pick out one. I'm going to actually point. And uh, let's see. That's dope. Yeah, I like that. Oh man. It's a choice, man. Yeah. We got this spray. Oh man. Yeah. All the flavor in this. Think I like this, man. I like that one. I love this one. Yeah. But I like that one. It's your head. Whatever you like, yours. Alright, I'm gonna get that. Like that one? Yeah. It's yours. Alright, now here comes. Let me, let me have a 25 each, okay? It's the best. It's $30. Right. Alright, so. I really can't. <laughs> Can we do 45? No. No, copy. I, I want to make a little profit. A little. Right. It's $30. I take $5. Alright. I think it's fair. Alright. It's only for you. Right. Nobody has this. Well, well, when people see this, they're going to come and ask them. <laughs> no, Bobby, I am the man here. I know yeah. what I got here. <laughs> yeah, I like the Lacoste you got yeah. on now. Yeah, it's $200. All right. All right. All right. All right, well, we're signing off, man. Once again, USA Fleet Market, 79th Street. You see what we got? Liberty City. That's good. That's good. You're welcome anytime. Ah, right, yeah, man. We're out here at what used to be Scott Projects, man. What's a trip is now this is it. They, they knocked Scott, Pro bleh, Scott Projects down uh, years ago, dog. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Scott Projects. Scott Projects was so cool. It was like one of the only hoods that every weekend they jammed, man. And what I mean by that is that a DJ was set up at the corner store with tall speakers, like 10 feet or whatever. 
and just jam to the wee hours of the morning, like three, four in the morning, you still hear the music blaring. Only on the weekends though, but one of the main reasons why they knocked down these projects is because down that way is a railroad track. And what niggas used to do in Scott Projects, well, they would take their donks. And for those who don't know what a donk is, a donk is a Chevy uh, Impala Caprice from 71, 72, 70, 70 tray. You gotta have that 7 tray though. So anyway, they would park the donks on the tra uh, railroad tracks, get the uh, train to stop. And rob the trains like modern day cowboys, man, out here getting it, and they were hitting. You gotta understand, this is like uh, murder, um, uh, Burdines and Macy's and shit like that um, being stopped. And I'm talking about whole carts of clothing. And one time they hit for uh, uh, liquor and cigarettes. One time the entire hood was drunk and smoking cigarettes, little, little babies smoking Newports. Now I'm just fucking around. But <laughs> but nah, but on, on the good side though, I, you know, we miss Scott Projects. Everybody that's from that era probably do. But you know, when you look around and you see all this shit, you kind of like say, all right, well, y'all did that, you know, cause this is beautiful, man. This is um, I, I guess you when, when you when you put people in a better living condition, it, it changes the mind frame a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? When you're city living in rat, roaches and rats, you know what I'm saying? When you're in the gutter, you think gutter, I guess. You know what I'm saying? So, this was great for the hood, for the community, because it gives opportunity to um, have some pride in yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, come on, everybody wants to stay somewhere nice and affordable. And I, you know, this is in the hood, so I'm quite sure it's affordable. You can literally walk across the street and almost get shot. I'm fucking around. But anyway, this is lovely, man. It's your boy Will Killer, man. The ex, and we're in ex Scott Projects. I don't even know what they're going to call this. Pretty soon, niggas going to take over, though. That's just how it is, man. That's just how it is. What can I say, you know? There's no jobs out here. You either hustle or, or or be hustled. So, hey, what can I say? Hey, seven bad now. I know you seen him coming across the street. Out the beans. Oh, I stay in the beans. Yeah, I stay in the beans. Yeah. He stay in first 48. Yeah. You feel me? He yeah. stay in first 48. So hey. Shit hard, man. Shit real hard. Hey, Mohammed. Free free commercial for you. <laughs> you want to say something, Uncle? You want to say something, bro? You know how the city is. Man. I love the city, man. You love it to the bottom. I was born and raised in here. Since '72, I've been right here. Seen it and did it all. Now the young generation of flip the script. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of hope and no problem around here with the gun shooting and all that. But apartments. all them new apartments. Yeah. Seems like they trying to make some good of the hood, you know. That's what's up. No, I ain't never leaving the city, man. I love this shit. I ain't never going nowhere. I got choices to move anywhere I want to. I choose to move over there where I moved at. Because that's what I want to do. I feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable in Miami Lakes, Kara City, none of that shit. Fuck that. I my own apartment in the trap. So I ain't gotta go far to get my shit when I wanna smoke. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let me get a black t-shirt too. Hey, I ain't man. gotta go far when I wanna get high. I mean, there's other things to put time into in, in order for you not to be delinquent or be disruptive or misbehave, you know, vi violating the social norm. But that don't work like that, cause that's what I that's what I'm talking about. The the American dream. This is when I say they put this here for you to try to get is the American dream. American Dream tells you that you could come here, you could go to school, get a good education, get you a career, make you money, and, and retire. That's everybody's dream. Who don't want to do that? Nobody wakes up in the morning and say, okay, I want to go rob a bank. Nobody wakes up in the morning and say, I want to go sell drugs. You want to go to school. You want to get an education. You want to go to elementary school, graduate elementary school, go to middle school, go from middle school to high school, go to high school to college. Then when you get to college, you be like, dang, I got a degree now. Let's go get a career. You at your career for some 20 or 25 years, and now you got you, you retired. You got money. You, you laid back. You ain't got to worry about nothing. But you got to remember, not all opportunities are provided to people like that. So now, so now it's... Back against the grain, you're back against the grain, 
I gotta go out here and make something happen. Now you gotta say you gotta sell the weed. Now you gotta sell the dope. Now you gotta rob a bay. Now you gotta resort to robbing individuals. But just to make it, not just the just not just to make it, not just to do it. But you gotta realize it's a means of survival. What slaves did? What slaves did to survive? They sung. They clung together. They grouped themselves together. Cause you notice as individuals. If we and you in the room and there's 30 individuals, me and you the only two people in the room and we the only two people of the same color, you think me and you gonna beef about this? Or we gonna, if we got differences and we know this, look, it's us two against 30 motherfuckers. Me and you can't fight 30 people by ourselves, but I guarantee you, 15 of them niggas ain't gonna come out looking how they playing, they was gonna looking out. Cause it's two of us. Two heads are always better than one. Two heads clean together to survive on one body. That's just like Siamese twins. They can't live without each other. Therefore, people gotta be the same way in unison like that. That's, that's the fail. They set rules and lines to keep the rich rich and the poor poor. And now within this poor poor, we want the poor to fight with the poor so we can, they can X each other out. The less of them, the better it is. The more money for us. We ain't gotta worry about them, then they out of our hair, they killing each other. That's why they give y'all the guns, the money, and the drugs. Take it from y'all and redistribute it right back into the community. Yeah, but yeah, you don't get caught until it's in your hand. And you don't get caught until it's in your hand. <laughs> we, we poor, we still, we still spoiled in a sense. You feel me? That's why I guess some people get mad. Oh, these Spanish people or these Haitians taking up all the jobs. Well, shit, they the only ones willing to get up six, seven in the morning, six or seven in the morning, get on that bus, and take those low paying jobs. We ain't gonna do it. We may complain, but we ain't gonna do that, no. Mm -mm. We ain't gonna do it. We ain't gonna do it. That's why I say even though we, we poor and all that stuff, we still, we still, we still, we still spoil you. You feel me? Because guess what? If we go around to um, Africa, where they really poor at, you feel me? We ain't gonna make it. Be real. We don't know how to survive just off water or you know just making it. We barely making it now, but our our form of poor is not measure up to theirs. You feel me? Like I, I already said, like myself, I, I look on TV and be like, I can't, I, man, shit, I can't do that shit. I look at it straight up, like I really can't do that shit. Basically, I just wanted to give a little background on myself. I grew up in Liberty City. Well, I grew up in a bunch of places. Um, probably probably the norm, you know what I'm saying? Shouts out to my father. But my father, he was a crackhead. You know, my mother, she was on coke real bad. And I kind of got bounced around quite a bit as a kid. Uh, I stayed in New Orleans, uh, Kara City for a while. But once I got to the city, though, when I got to Liberty City, I grew up over there, on, like around the West Little River area which is like 79th, 27th Avenue, somewhere around there. And um, it's just a big difference um, from being anywhere else or going anywhere else. I've, I've been to a couple places, and I can honestly say that, that Liberty City is just... It, it, I guess this documentary is perfect because it is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, when it's good, it's good, man. Um, I grew up with my grandmother. Uh, she took care of her kids and her kids' kids and her kids' kids' kids. And that's probably like the typical situation for a young black man growing up in Liberty City, growing up with a grandmother. And, um, you know, you get the good from that. You know, you get the old school values. You get to learn from the coons. And, and, and by coons, I mean the older people in your life. You know what I mean? And then you, got, you have the bad. You have uh, your peers that you grow up with and how you learn to be you, basically. Because you get yourself, you find yourself from your surroundings. I mean, at least that's what I came to find out, you know. You find yourself by the people you surround yourself with in the environment, you know what I'm saying? And then eventually with time, you come to be you. And so, um, you know, with, with the, when it came to bad, you know, I had my dogs and I had my homies and their influences may not have always been on a positive note, but for the most part, you know, I don't regret anything because it made me who I am, you know. I'm a lot stronger than most. Um, you hear so often about people from certain upper classes that when they get in a situation, they fold. And I think being from the city or being from any inner city, you just kind of get 
you get bred for that shit, man. You get, you know, you get tough as the years go by. You know what I'm saying? And then it comes the ugly. And a lot of times the ugly you have no control over. Uh, gunshots, little kids getting hit in drive-bys, drug deals going bad, crooked police officers, you name it. We got it. And it's real. It's real. I can remember one time I actually saw a drop off uh, one time in Opelok in the Browns. I seen the detectives pull up. I seen the dope boys pull up. The dope boys dropped the detectives a brown paper bag full of money and the detectives pulled off. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah they bought that life down here as well. The ugly man, it's really no, it's really no, uh, there's no way to uh, cover up the ugly. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, you know? It's something that you deal with. Like you heard from my brother earlier, he, he, he loved Liberty City. And you get a lot of that. You get a lot of people that just, you know, love where they from and want to die right here. And, um, you know, a lot of people may think that that's, that's crazy, but those people that stay here and stick with it, they eventually become those pillars in the community. So when they do pass on, their legacy wasn't in vain. You know, some way, some way, shape, form, or fashion, um, they will be remembered. And um, I guess my legacy, what I want to leave behind is through this entertainment life, you know, actually being on this camera, actually getting to a situation where I could come back home and maybe the next time when I'm on camera, it won't be just a documentary to um, focus on the good, the bad, and the ugly. Maybe there'll be something that um, I'll be able to give back to the kids or I'll be able to give back to those uh, drug addicted parents that really don't know, you know, where to turn. And a lot of times, you know, the, 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 I'm not saying that help isn't out there, but when help comes from someone that's been in it, you feel it a little bit more, you know? And I've been in it. You know, I've been homeless, I've been thugging, I done had money, I done been broke, I done been on coke, I done been off coke. I done lived quite a few different lives, man, but you know, right now, where I'm headed is bigger than me, you know? It's bigger than me right now. It's about what I leave behind, you know what I'm saying, and what, I, what I'm able to pass on uh, to my seeds, and uh, not only my seeds, but to the world, so, you know, I hope this is a start. It's your boy Will Kill him. Signing off, Pointville. Stand up. Mommy, I love you. Bye. When I was in the Navy, uh, they asked me to uh, write something in honor of the Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, and I'm going to share that with you now. The name of the poem is called The Dreamer. Uh, if anybody's out there, I'm interested in getting into radio. But The Dreamer by Reverend Davis. With words and deeds, he filled the need and showed another way for us to love and learn and care in a modern age. King noted we are brothers who should live in harmony. White, brown, red, tan, and ebony. His cause was as a wife. It called for sacrifice. To better man with helping hands, he had to give his life. So let us remember Martin, not for prize or his fame, but because he opened hearts and minds which led to change. And on that day, when that dream becomes reality, let's all join hands and pray that it may always be. God bless you. I'm out. Good. You got it? That's it? That was good. All right. Thank you. Thank you.